What was your I'm dating an effing idiot moment? I went on a couple of dates with a woman who owned two large, energetic dogs. When she bought them, she was informed that she'd need to walk them every day to get them exercise and burn off energy. To save time, instead of walking them, she'd take them for a drive and thought that accomplished the same thing. Story 2 I dated a man long distance for about seven years. It was only about an hour's drive, so not too long a distance. I always knew he was bad with money, had terrible credit, and wasn't terribly responsible, but I didn't know how bad until, in the span of one week, he got his car repossessed, got evicted, and had his identity stolen. He had given his tax returns to a guy he met at a bar who said he was a CPA. Note that this is a grown 40-year-old man. Story 3. This wasn't what made me think he was an idiot. When he told me he was moving back in with his mother, I offered for him to move in with me. Unlike him, I am good with money and also work in a lucrative field, and that I'd essentially be his sugar mama as long as he worked out a plan to get into financial shape. He said no, so I said bye. It really became clear how big of an idiot he is when he came back saying he changed his mind five months later. It's great to see that the OP had the self-awareness to recognize that their partner's financial irresponsibility wasn't going to work for them, and they were strong enough to say no when their partner came crawling back. Story 4 He told me he had a lot of inventions, and how rich he will be when one sells. I asked him to tell me more. He says his best invention is eye drops that eliminate the need for eyeglasses. The guy is a mailman, not a doctor, not a scientist, and he wears glasses. So I said, if these eye drops work, why do you wear glasses? The eye drops don't exist yet. But when someone else actually formulates these fantasy eye drops, my mailman friend thinks he will get the money because he invented them by dreaming them up. Story 5 I dated a really manipulative and horrible person for a bit who would hide behind his weird interpretation of the Bible, saying, I can do anything I want as long as I ask for forgiveness after. I can't go to hell no matter what I do because I'm saved. So one time we were having a conversation about how he let his friends bully me, so I didn't want to hang out with them anymore. It was the kind of healthy talk in relationships where you're just trying to feel understood. I mentioned to him that if I ever saw people mistreating him, I would come to his defense because I cared about him. He said, but I'm not you. Just because you pee sitting down doesn't mean I have to pee sitting down. In that moment, I realized what I was getting myself into and broke it off immediately. Also, I had seen him pee sitting down. Just wanted to add that. Story 6. When I mentioned I was on my period, he asked what my favorite flavor of tampons was. He genuinely thought the colors on the tampon packs were flavors, and that it would soak into my blood while inside and I'd eventually taste it. I'm desperate to know the source of this information. Story 7. We went to a science museum and saw a display of a carboniferous swamp, and I casually remarked that the land would have been different back then due to plate tectonics. She had never heard that the continents moved, so I explained how it worked with plates moving, earthquakes, and volcanoes. She still didn't believe me, so I found the plate tectonics museum display that explained it all. And then she said she was amazed that I had enough pull with the museum to have them set up a display to support my lies. It's crazy to think that someone could be so resistant to learning new information. Even if we think we know something, there's always more to learn and explore. Sometimes it's necessary to recognize the red flags and move on, no matter how difficult it may be. Story 8. My ex thought he could play hockey and found what he thought were the holy grail of skates. He bought them for $200. His friend, who lived in a city an hour and 20 minutes away, told him he got the same skates for $195. So my ex, in his old Camaro that cost $50 in gas on a round trip, returned the skates he got for $200 and drove one hour and 20 minutes to get the skates that were $5 cheaper. That should have been the biggest red flag, but sadly it turned out I was the idiot who stayed with him for a few more years. Story 9 I was just lounging about one Sunday, and skiing came on the TV. At one point, the commentator said that contestants reached 100 kilometers an hour at that point in the race. The ex literally shouted bullcrap at the telly. 
I looked at her and asked why. She replied that there was no way that they could tell how far they'd go in an hour since the race was only two minutes long. Story 10. My partner isn't an idiot, but she is impulsive, and sometimes that's basically the same thing. It's gotten to the point where we joke about her Skittles moments, so named because of the time she accidentally dropped a Skittle and didn't realize it until it melted into her fitted bedsheet. Without thinking, and before I could stop her, she calmly grabbed a pair of scissors and cut out the offending part of the sheet. She was completely calm about it until she picked up the cut sheet piece, and what she did fully sunk in. She was very sad since it was her favorite set. Similar dubious decision-making happens only every few months, but it is hilarious and exasperating every time. Hilariously, she was very brilliant. She has a master's degree but had some pretty silly moments. She received new registration for her car. The tags were taped to the registration. Rather than remove the adhesive back from the sticker, she used the piece of tape to attach it to her license plate. It fell off after a drive and I will never forget the look on her face when I explained to her that her tags were a sticker. She had been driving for 15 years at this point. Story 11. It was 1999 and I was a Marine. She asked me, What is war like? How many wars have you fought in? When you jumped out of a plane in enemy territory, didn't you think you might get shot down? She asked these questions for months. I would ask her which war was going on or which war could I have been fighting in. She was always super confused and would laugh and say I will open up eventually. She told her mom that when I got out I was going to make tons of money as a parachute repairman, but I had no idea what she was talking about. I told her many times that I never jumped, and it was rare for Marines to be airborne. Story 12 I told her not to buy a car from the Buy Here Pay Here dealership. We were both 18 and 19 and had no credit history, so it was the only way to finance a car because they would lend without credit at outrageous prices. It's not a great idea to finance before having a solid career income. Our relationship went long distance for a while, and she bought a car from there. I asked her why she did it when she already had a vehicle she could use from her dad. Why not wait until I come into town and we can shop together? I received a lot of military training on how not to get ripped off when buying a car and thought I could help her. Instead, she got mad and said, Why can't you just be happy for me? I finally got a car of my own. She confessed that her payments were too high, but I didn't rub it in with an I told you so, though. We didn't have much longer to go before the long-distance portion of our relationship ended. We met after high school, I enlisted in the military, and we had plans to move in together after I finished my 18 months of training. We had a few moments like that, and she essentially made me break up with her. She tried to get me back over the years, but I kept learning about more and more bad decisions she made, and I didn't want to take on the burden of her poor decision-making in the event of our marriage. Being aligned on finances is a big thing in determining if a relationship will last or end in disaster. If OP hadn't broken of the relationship, I'm sure the poor financial planning wouldn't have just stopped and she would continue to make poor decisions that'd lead to arguments. Story 13. When he told me he 100% believed the moon landing was fake and followed it up by not knowing how many states there are, it was like a cold slap to the face of how ignorant I had been. It woke me up. I don't know exactly how long it took me to leave after this, but whatever amount of time it was, it was entirely too long.